I'm Wayne Shepard here with Bruce Everhart, who is Manager of Marketing and Development for Moody Radio. And Bruce, great to be with you again. Likewise, Wayne. I know you recently worked with DSA on Operation Next at Moody Radio. What was Operation Next all about? Well, our slogan, and uh, DSA helped us uh, land on this slogan, was always on, always here for you, Operation Next. And it was really the next step in upgrading our facilities to really this generation's kind of standards. Uh, We upgraded studios from analog to digital, um, upgraded a lot of transmitters that were 30, even 40 years old, and uh, some much needed generators in the field when, um, you know, these tornadoes and various uh, weather conditions come through our communities. We've been off the air. Well, these generators are going to help us be always on, Mm -hmm. always here for you. So as technology evolves, you've got to keep up with that, and that means money spent for equipment. And uh, I would imagine with a large network like Moody, that's always a constant challenge, isn't it? Well, it was interesting to uh, to go through this too, because there was such a need on the technical side of things. But how do you how do you make that personal? How do you make that relatable to a person that is consuming radio, just like you know they're turning it on every morning? How do you describe the need in personal kind of relational ways? And DSA really helped us capture the emotion of that in these uh, upgrades. I'll talk more about how they did that in a moment. But how much money did you need to raise for Operation Next? Well, our goal was uh, $1.5 million, and that was the first phase of all the urgent, critical needs that uh, our network uh, has over the course you know, of the next uh, uh, two to three years. There was a second phase uh, that was needed as well, but we just looked at the critical needs, $1.5 million. And uh, Wayne, stunningly, um, not only the $1.5 came in, but... Um, over uh, $2 million uh, came in in the uh, short So short you exceeded the goal. Oh, it was uh, way over the top, um, beyond our wildest imagination. And um, to God be the glory, we were very thrilled at how listeners responded to this. And uh, we tried a lot of new uh, approaches that we haven't tried before in, a, in terms of a, a radio campaign. And um, God brought blessing in an, an amazing way. Those new approaches came because of the DSA recommendations? Yeah, um, they did. Uh, we we uh, tried some different approaches. What we have done in the past on our radio campaigns is a fairly local approach, and we tried something where we engaged our national personalities in an approach where we linked all of our stations together in the afternoon. And uh, that hybrid, um, what is commonly called uh, a hybrid uh, model, really um, worked, and uh, that was an idea that came from uh, our DSA team. This was a two-day event on the radio on multiple Moody-owned and operated stations using those national uh, program personalities, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are some of the things you did before ever going on the air? Well, we uh, we wrote some spots and we uh, teased the campaign. You know, one of the things that um, DSA, I think, uh, contributed to this uh, this campaign is they really understood our brand. They were even um, consumers of our brand. I mean, they they love Moody Radio as uh, listeners and uh, understood the ins and outs in terms of who the personalities are, how they were wired, and actually wrote copy that uh, was tuned in to those personalities and their essence. And I think that really uh, engaged those personalities in a way where they saw the copy and they say, yeah, this is, this is me. This is, this is how I sound. That really brought some life to the campaign early on. Mm-hmm. So you did the, the radio spots before the campaign went on the air for those two days. Right. You also did some direct mail, though, didn't you? We did a direct mail piece, and uh, it was a very targeted piece. It really got into not only the local needs, uh, but also the national needs. And they were able to customize each letter that went into a community that would basically uh, paint a picture of the value of this campaign for those local communities but also the uh, value of the campaign nationally as well. So they were able to customize and put in local copy and local personalities, but also talk about the larger picture as well. It worked very well. It was a very direct appeal, and you could see the value and benefits in the in the letter, and uh, the impact of that direct mail letter was uh, phenomenal. I can see how this is a multifaceted approach. So you had on-air spots, you had direct mail. I'm sure you used the website uh, or maybe a special website. We did. Um, we actually uh, used our web team in terms of in-house to build that website. And uh, the other thing that we uh, used at DSA's recommendation was a call-in center where listeners could actually respond during the ramp-up time of the tease portion of the of the campaign. So before going on the air, yeah. people were calling. Yeah. 
in was, response to the spots and direct mail. That's right. Listeners, you know, could could respond now. You know, web is is definitely a major part of what we do. But uh, when it comes down to it, the phone is uh, the most common way people are going to respond. And uh, having uh, an operator available twenty four seven, we were able to secure a, a call center with the help of DSA. And uh, we saw a lot of uh, response in the ramp-up phase through that uh, call center. I know DSA helped in setting up that call center. Previously, had you used an outsourced call center like that? We had not. We'd only used web uh, during our ramp-up phase of our radio campaigns and then a uh, local call center that uh, we had during our share events. So we had not used a, uh, an outside uh, source for call centers. And these guys helped us uh, put that together and uh, get it going ahead of time. Was that a scary thing? Uh, maybe a- uh, you know, something you hadn't done before? Yeah, it was. I mean, um, it, was a, it was a big change uh, for us internally, you know, having someone else uh, handle our listeners and uh, be able to make sure that they were cared for. But uh, they did a beautiful job, and DSA was help, uh, really helped to manage that and making sure that the call center had every bit of information about who we were at Moody Radio and how to handle each one of those uh, listener calls. You're putting yourself in the hands of that call center. You want to be represented correctly, and it sounds like that happened. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. One other aspect we've not talked about is the use of social media. Yeah, our social team uh, really uh, ramped up on this. Uh, they took uh, DSA was able to boil the campaign down into some talking points that we actually shared not only with our on-air talent but with our social media team and our web team. And it was those talking points that really framed the campaign and allowed these other uh, creative teams to negotiate um, – you know, engagement in each one of these channels. And it all starts from those talking points and really boiling it down in terms of those creative elements, and then they're passed on to these other creative teams. There's a lot of moving parts in a campaign like this. How did you stay on the same page and keep the message together? Well, the team here at uh, DSA was very organized. We um, had what we we're going to make a weekly uh, kind of uh, meeting on Operation Next, and it almost turned into a daily meeting as we look through each one of the tasks and and uh, working through you know the checklist. And DSA was able to to bring that to the table and let us know, hey, here's what's next. Here's what we need to be doing now. Here's the deadline. Here's here are we're we're a little behind here. We're um, we're on target here, and uh, they're very organized and uh, kept us on task throughout the campaign. You see the importance of consistent messaging and the need to stay on target. Absolutely, absolutely. And and you can get lost in a lot of the details, you know, and there are so many details. But to be able to take a 30,000-foot uh, viewpoint and keep the essence of the campaign and the slogan and the values and the talking points together, they were very helpful in, in uh, putting that all together for us. You mentioned those uh, program personalities who are accustomed to doing their own shows, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and yet you, uh, you brought them in on this project. How did they do and how did people respond to those personalities? on those programs? Oh, we saw a great uh, response in the afternoons. We had never engaged our afternoon personalities, our national personalities in a campaign like this. And actually, what uh, we saw in the afternoons equaled and in some markets even surpassed Hmm. some of the uh, early morning hours that traditionally have uh, driven response. So this is Janet Parshall and Chris Fabry and... Yeah, the midday team, Anita Lustria and uh, Melinda Schmidt. And uh, it was exciting to see their eyes light up when the phones started to light up in the afternoons as well. Looking back on it, Bruce, uh, what do you think was the biggest contribution that DSA made? What what's the the big principle? Yeah, I think there were there were three things. Um, they were organized and uh, kept us on task. They um, brought some credible creative campaign ideas to the table, call center, and uh, even some spot writing um, support. These were radio-friendly consultants, and they were able to handle that kind of thing. But I think the biggest thing that DSA was able to provide is they understood Moody Radio. They understood who we are and what makes us tick, helping us, helping listeners unpack today's issues from a biblical perspective, Bible in one hand and newspaper in the other. They understood that, and they were able to shape the campaign around the essence of who we were, and uh, that gave them a leg up in a lot of ways because um, they 
knew us and understood us and were able to bring that sort of emotional equity to their work. They enjoy listening to Moody Radio themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was a personal investment uh, as well. So...